What's going on guys? Guess what today's project is? We're chopping up fenders. Hey guys, what? What is going on? I'm Mike Barker. I do all kinds of motorcycle, car, adventure, and modification stuff on this channel. So if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Listen, today's project though, we are bobbing, chopping, modifying fenders. So if you are into any of those things, choppers, bobbers, cafe racers, any of that stuff, you might find this interesting. So a lot of times what guys will do is they'll just, well, they'll do this. They'll take their fender and they'll slice the end off. Maybe they'll round it up nice to make it look like a banana fender, you know. But there's a problem with that. A lot of times when you do that, you can see here, let's see if we can focus. From the factory, these fenders have a beautiful, beautiful rolled lip on them. Uh, this fender, not so beautiful right now, but you get my meaning. And this carries along all the way to the front of the fender as well. Well, instead of just chopping this and shaping it to make it look eh, kind of right, I took and made a cut across here, and then I made a cut further down at the tip of the fender. Then we're gonna take them, put them together, weld them up, make them beautiful. Now, before you lose your mind, if you're new to my channel, earlier on when I introduced this project, I said the only things I'd be modifying would be things that were damaged or unoriginal. So, the rear fender, there's a lovely little bump out here. And right here, there's a dip, that's a dent, not supposed to be there. I'm pretty sure at some point in this bike's life that it was in a little bit of a, a fender bender, let's say. No, no pun intended. Also, also, another thing that's wrong. The front fender on my CB750 is not original because back here, there's a hole that you can see. That's for the grommet that holds a speedo cable in place. On a CB750, that should actually be on the right side of the fender, not on the left like mine. Also, there are some additional holes drilled up here. Not exactly sure why. If I was to guess, I would say that somebody had this fender sitting around from another Honda project and that they decided to make it work on this bike. Listen, I completely realize that that fender may, you know, be original for some other Honda bike, but quite frankly, it's ugly. I have it. I have a backup fender as well if I screw this one up totally, so I'm just gonna have some fun with it. Why not, right? So the first thing you should do if you're gonna remove your fender is disconnect the speedo cable down the bottom of the hub assembly here where the, uh, the speedo, the mechanical pickup is, and then pull the speedo cable up out through the cable routing that is on the fender stay, the rear fender stay. I don't recommend this, but someone, not myself, cut this little routing bracket, so um, I, don't have, I don't have to undo my speedo cable. But you should. And of course, on the other side, make sure that your brake line is free of its holder. There we go. So now we're on to removing the eight bolts that actually hold the fender on to the bike. They are, in no particular order, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fun. This fender stay wasn't even riveted on. Look at rivets are still falling out of it. So I'm seeing some really, really weird differences between these two fenders. The primary fender is a stock CB750K fender. The bottom one is the one that came off my bike. If you look at them clearly, end to end, there's a difference. Between the rivet holes for the fender stays, on both ends, plus the overall length of it. This other fender is quite a bit shorter. There's also another kind of a crazy little difference. The speedo cable hole, as I mentioned before, but, and it's gonna be really hard to see here, but the CB750 fender is perfectly round across the top. And this mystery fender actually has a crown 
like a ridge line right along the center here. I have no idea what this is off of. First thing I'm gonna do is try and take this terrible, terrible glue on molding off though. Let's see what's underneath. Yes, look at that. Reminds me of aliens. Gross. I'm mean, gonna I have to clean that up nice. that's it. I went ahead and shortened these up a little bit even further. So now I'm going to use these to get my template, mark the line where I've really got to cut these. Even after I do that though, there will be some grinding and some fitting just to make it all perfect for when I go to weld it. Okay, so with my, of course I couldn't label these the same, could I? Ha <laughs> ha! With my mark that I made at the back of the fender right here, I'm just going to kind of eyeball these as best I can. So what I'm doing is I'm holding them together just tightly enough to make my mark. There's a bump right here that I'm gonna have to be careful of. Like I said though, there's gonna be a little cutting and fitting involved. All right, so that's the rear. The front, more of the same. Cool. And now more sparks. These two pieces are just going to end up going in the dumpster now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do some practice welds using this material just so I can get my welder settings correct so I don't make a mess of the final product. One hour later. Here are the test results of my first test weld. As usual, I could be a better welder, but I'm not. Made some welds across here and then I ground them all down. And uh, yeah, I think this is gonna work. I'm just gonna go ahead and knock down a couple of high spots that I've got here so that when I put the end piece on to either side, it makes for a lot better weld. Bad, pretty sweet actually. Just low, low, low voltage, slow wire speed, just spot welded all the way across. I went ahead and put the fender back on the front of the bike just to see how it was lining up, how it looked. I think I've got it pretty well looking how I want it to now. It might be a touch longer than I wanted, but a touch longer is not a bad thing. It's gonna keep more water and spray and gunk out of my face as I'm going down the road. While I've got the welder out, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rear fender and do a similar chop to it. So let's get at it. Gotta first remove some of the lights though. With the tail light off, you can really see the kink in this fender. Oh yes, somebody smucked into the back of this at some point. I don't think I can get away with, with making a cut totally below the dent, so I'm gonna have to knock it back out, mark my line, make my cut. Lovely. Well, I'm all done with the welder, so I gotta get that away right now. I'm really sorry. I am gonna modify something on the original frame. I wanna use my new tail lights, but they're a few thou too big on the diameter of the thread to go through here. So I'm gonna open these up. Now, this is not wild and crazy here. Maybe I'm just removing corrosion. Let's go with that. 
but I'm gonna open these up to around 400, uh, 405 I think is the drill bit that I've had that's closest to it, so that I can pass these signal lights through and use these, uh, these factory locations. Seat down, see how this looks. I think that's exactly what I'm after. Just a little tidied up, still practical, just a little bit cleaner. I really, really like the look of these cheap, cheap, cheap Amazon turn signals. Bang for the buck, they're looking pretty nice right now. We'll see how much headache they give me down the road though. Really happy actually. It's pretty much exactly what I'm envisioning. The further I go along here though, the more I think about a different seat because that one's just a little too tall. It's super comfortable though, and very, very, very OEM look. It is a reproduction seat though, but I'm not gonna chop that up. It's too nice, it's too nice. I've got a lovely king and queen seat hiding over around the bike there. That might get sliced up because it is ugly as sin. And yes, if you're a keen viewer, you're gonna notice wardrobe change halfway through because um, it took me a couple days to film this. Oh, hold up here, we're not quite done yet because something really cool happened the other day. One of you guys contacted me through my email address, which is available in the about section, or about, or about section, if you will, of my main page, and let me know about his Honda CB750K project, which is pretty rad because a lot of the elements that he used are what I'm going for on my bike. Merrick, listen man, I really appreciate you sending those pictures along. I think it's so rad to see what other people are doing to their bikes or cars. If anyone else who's out there wants to send something along to me, it could be a car project, a motorcycle project, or a truck, or anything cool that you're working on that's kind of vehicle related. Fire me an email, send some pictures, let me know who you are, what you're from, what you're from, where you're from, and what your dreams and aspirations are for the project. I will try my best to include them in future videos. I might make this a regular, regular segment. All right, well, that's it for today, guys. Listen, if you're enjoying this project and haven't subscribed yet, please, please consider doing so. It means a ton to me. If you like this video in particular, smash that like button. And if you are subscribed, make sure you hit the bell for the notifications. And guys, see you in the next video.